Hey guys, it's Dan with the Corporate Beat Beats. You're watching another beat making showcase. Today I'm going to be making uh, a beat uh, that is in the similar style of Juicy J. Uh, I, I remember he had that song with uh, Katy Perry and I really liked the vibe in that but I kind of liked the Juicy J part more and uh, I kind of liked the way that he kind of uses these kind of trap beats but it's again it, it's a little bit of electro hip hop in this one and here. Again, I'll take you through the, the kind of steps of how I created the beat and I'll talk about each individual instrument. Um, just to show you the intro, just, oh, I'll just let you know it's on 140 BPM. It's a standard kind of trap kind of tempo and uh, there's a couple of tricks in this and then there's some nice little sounds. I'll show you everything in, in that's in the beat. Just just listen to the ver or the intro first. instruments that are in the intro first. So you can see there's an 808 bass line. Uh, this is the same way that I make my bass lines every single time. Obviously I cut off uh, all the highs in this bass, this 808. Don't want them. I've got a lot of kind of scents that are giving me the kind of highs in the mix. I'm just cutting a little bit at, what's it, at 70 hertz because my kick drum is going to hit right through there. So this is gonna supply the bass to the song. I created this uh, 808 in uh, the ESX. All I did was drag and drop my 808 WAV file in here, pitched it so I can play any note. So I can play any note in the, the 808. And that's really it. Uh, it's, it's, a good, it's a good kit, uh, it's a good 808 sound, and I tend to use it a lot, and plus, it's a bit versatile as well. It just it has that sound that punches through the mix. A lot of the time I'm talking about I'm worried about later on in the mix. So I'll always kind of revert to the sounds that I know. And uh, because sometimes I can just know how to mix them. I know that they're gonna work with certain kicks, etc. So we'll just listen to the next sound then. In a second, I'll just delete that. The next one is Ascent in Massive and it's called Air Conditioning, Air Conditioned. And we'll just take a quick listen to it on its own. And it sounds like just like a bell. It's a bit climbing up and down in the mix. It's not really doing anything crazy. It's a bit... But a lot of these trap songs have this minimalistic <laughs> melody. It's like, it's almost like a little Jingle Bells kind of melody. Uh, a lot of these trap beats do have this. Uh, they don't have these kind of crazy melodies. They have these kind of monotonous ones in the background. And they kind of do their crazy stuff with the 808s and the snare rolls and stuff like that. The, a lot of the busyness in, um, in a, a trap beat is in the drums or in the way that the rapper raps. A lot of instrumentation in it is very, very basic. And you can see that with this melody. It's just... Basically, this melody is the same here. It's just up another... It's up to C4, whereas this starts on C3. And it just it's just another octave higher. And uh, it just it just starts starts the beat, and together with this pad in the background, it gives it gets a little bit more structured. And you can hear that it's just two notes. It's playing C and then it's playing a D sharp. 
and it's just really kind of setting the mood in the background. I talk about this all the time. If you haven't watched my other beat making tutorials, talk about these pad sounds just fill the space, the void, the emptiness in a track. They don't kind of just take over the sound. Like if I just had that one on a pad, it's a bit boring. Even with the 808, it still sounds a bit boring. With, with, with all three sounds, it's funny, this kind of scent here, this All Souls one, it's in Massive. This scent here, to me, is kind of, it's kind of acting as a pad, but it has this creepy feeling as well in it. Um, it has a creepy feeling like, like, a, um, like a cello in it as well. You can kind of hear it in it. It's like a load of cellos in the background. setting the mood for the beat as well. Here is the 808s. I forgot to show you those 808s. I'll just wind that there and show you the 808s. This is a very, very basic bass line, but when you hear it with the kick drums and everything later on, you'll you'll hear what, what it actually sounds like, how, be, how it changes as well. So you can see that I'm kind of just playing a basic pattern. So it's playing like just the kind of the note over and over again, the E2 over and over again, and then it kind of plays two top higher notes and it kind of skips up to two higher notes and then it comes back down and then it kind of it kind of fools the listener into playing the notes again and then plays it again. It's just it's a weird kind of trap kind of bass line that sometimes these kind of ones, because they're so simple, they can be kind of hard to make. Because you're like thinking, how do I play the same note over and over again? But the way I develop it is, is I tend to make this drum part. I'll show that in a second. I'll make all the kind of drums first. Because I find when I just make the 808 on its own, it just sounds a bit too basic for me. That I'm not getting anything from it. I'll tend to make my drums, I'll make my instruments, and then I'll add that 808 in. Because I can play around with that 808 over and over again. And then I'll eventually I'll find something like, even like a little bit like a melody to play with. And uh, it's, it's still carrying the beat though. And the way the kick drum or the 808 is bouncing in that section there, it, it just really reminds me of Juicy J, the way he kind of, the way he bounces on a beat, the way he raps, <laughs> and the way he kind of, I'm, I'm not saying he's my favorite rapper or anything like that, but he does have some really funny raps and the way he skips on a beat. And you can hear the bounce in the beat and I can just picture Juicy J, it reminds me of his raps and the beats in his in his songs. So what comes in next? Then I kind of just brought in some kind of perks there as well. So a little bit of a snare old thing there. Some snares play. And then just the standard snare plays. These instruments down here come in as well, down here, and they're pretty important to the, the kind of instrumentation as well. Like just because that that all souls kind of riff, that kind of one from Massive is in there. It's like the one I said, it's a, it's a bit like ch having cellos in the mix. This one here, these two here, create another eerie effect in, in it as well. And I always see these trap beats as kind of dark beats, they're very rarely uh, you can get some kind of trap beats that are poppy, but you they'll never be like this kind of sound as well. They kind of, a lot of the time, they're kind of dark, aggressive. This is song isn't aggressive, except the drums are a bit aggressive, but uh, the, the instrumentation is a bit lighter. And you can hear that in more sub Metro Boomin's stuff. You can hear it a lot in his instrumentation that he uses. His like, drums can be aggressive, but he's instrumentation if you listen to like future or the, the album drake and future did 
uh, what a time to be alive the beats in that he kind of has kind of a, a nicer sound to his instrumentation but the drums are very gloomy and dark And these sounds, actually, I've used these before and I've actually used them as a lighter kind of sound, a nice kind of sound. This is a nice kind of, almost like a flute. It's, a, it's actually a sweet melody in this really dark song <laughs> and it's kind of just it's a nice contrast to have and that that um that sound is actually in massive as well it's called bansuri in orange sky it's kind of a sound i've used a lot now if i have to be honest and it's just because i like the the flute kind of sound obviously i've tweaked the eq to kind of cut in through the mix cut off some of my lows because i'm getting those from the 808 and this one's a little bit more darker, this one here, this next one. And I think it's playing the same melody again. Yeah, it's playing the same melody as the Bansuri in the Orange Sky. And, and this one is actually a little bit darker but it's more of a pad sound, this kind of dreamizer in, in massive, it's kind of a pad sound, but together they kind of make a nice little riff. They kind of, I just used two of them because they thicken each other up. This one's a little more darker than this one, so it's darkening that other sound, and plus they both complement each other. When you hear all three sounds together, they sound pretty cool. And you can hear the darkness in them, even though there's a nice melody being played, it's still an, an eerie feeling to it, and you can hear the trap elements in it. Uh, just to let you know there, there's, there is a, an extra snare in that little section there. There's another snare, I just want to point that out. And the reason why I put an extra snare, this is kind of a, just a production trick. Because uh, sometimes I don't like using the kind of standard kind of, you might hear these uh, whoosh effects and stuff that I, I don't want to use them all the time, even though I pretty use them a lot. But uh, you can, in certain trap songs, like the Lex Luger kind of climb has been used to death by trap music producers. So what I usually do is actually put a clap, a loud clap in there, or I put a loud snare in there, an extra snare. And uh, you can hear those two snares play an extra, extra snare as well. One second, I'll just push them. And you can hear that there's extra snares there and the, the last one is a bit louder. And it just, it just adds another effect to, that, to let everyone know that we're going into the hook, basically. That's what I really wanted. Because this, this section is practically the hook here. I'm, pl I'm changing it up, uh, playing the hook first. Uh, and just, just a different way of structuring the song, really. So we'll just listen to the, the drums in the hook because we've kind of covered all the instrumentation, so it's just the drums. So we'll just listen to the drums for us. And you can hear this a really aggressive bounce in that kick. And we'll just go through the kick on its own. Okay, and that's the kick. And you can hear it's just a, it's not actually that complicated. It doesn't even sound like a trap, trap kind of. 
it sounds like it almost just like a, a normal hip hop kind of bounce. And, and the snares coming in as well. There's standard snares with some reverb on them as well. And uh, I put up, it's when all the kind of perks and the hi hats and stuff come in that they really kind of, the, the hi hats and all these kind of stuff, when all that kind of stuff comes in, it just really kind of shakes everything up. One second, I'll get some. And uh, we'll listen to that. It's when all the all the kind of perks and hi hats come in that really gets everything going, and it, it makes it sound like more like a trap beat then. It's because the hi hats and snare rolls and all that stuff all make the sound sound so much more busy than it actually is. Um, the the eight oh eight I showed you that already, but the eight oh eight is actually copying. The, the pattern of the drums but in a sense in a way that it's playing it's it's chord notes as well it's playing chords sorry that's just too much info there it's the the the, the 808 is actually playing chords at the bass line but it's copying the kick pattern the pattern the same kind of wherever the kick is hitting the 808 is actually hitting as well and you can hear it here But altogether, it sounds like a Juicy J track then. It's, it's somehow it just blends together in and actually sounds like a nice track. And then here's, here's like the, the verses then. The verses kind of just change up then. So basically what I did here is I just kick, took out the kick, left some of the percussion, took out some hi-hats. So it's all about, every, like I showed you before, it's all about making a good loop, a good 8 bar or 16 bar loop, and then playing around with, with the production elements of it then. So like taking out stuff, making everything sound like um, like something change up, something is changing up every so often. So it doesn't kind of have the same kind of. Tr all, if I had to play that that hook throughout the whole beat, it would get kind of boring. The if you take out the kicks for just a little while, Metro Boomin, Sunny Digital, all these kind of producers kind of just do this. They kind of make a really good hook, and then play with it after that. And that's the kind of production elements. That's how you produce something. Is uh how you take stuff out and bring stuff back in. So here's the verse. And there was my little production trick again. So when it hits that last snare, it goes to a silence and then it kind of comes back in again. But I did also add one little 808 there because I felt like it needed to lean into that next 808 note. So that's another kind of trick as well, just to kind of let you know that one. And, and another uh, uh, thing you could do there, I could have done, was actually make a, 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 an 808 slide and uh, slide into the next note. But I never thought of it at the time. But uh, they're kind of little production tricks. It's a nice silence and then a snap of that snare. Last 808 coming in as well. So, and you can hear that first 808 coming in as well, that one there. And it just leans into the next note. If I pause, hang on a second now. I think I've got that in a weird position. I probably won't, shouldn't probably move it <laughs> in case I can't get it back. One second. We'll just see. Okay. I'll just see what it sounds like without. 
See, it even sounds okay without that, but I still think it sounds better when I kind of lean into that next note. So you just hear it a little 808 beforehand, and it, I, to me, it just at the time it sounded uh, right to me. Uh, and that was just sometimes you kind of think of crazy stuff on the spot and, and, and it sounds good. Other times you think you come back to it and I'm like, meh, I don't know. Um, but uh, I bring, I kind of bring the, the hook in here for uh, a different kind of feel and then I drop it out again. But um, there was something I wanted to mention here. Uh, just show you that I actually put in the first notes of the hook here. And why did I do that? This is a you can do this another way. There's loads of different ways to do this, but I just found that this this way worked. Sometimes people might com commit create automation tracks and let stuff float out uh, or bring that down so it doesn't bleed into the next one. Other times I will play the next note in that so the riff can still end. Because if I do it without it, I feel like it never the riff never ends. It's a bit weird. So you can hear you can hear what I mean when you hear it all. It has to play that last note. It has to play that last note, and uh, so I have to kind of finish the riff without it. Um, I'll just show you what it sounds like without it. It just sounds a bit weird. something was incomplete there something needed to finish uh, it, maybe it's the someone who plays the piano or the guitar uh, feels that way but I felt that I had to complete the riff and I feel like it bleeds into the next section it kind of just softens into the next section as well and that's just a little production trick you, uh, you kind of come up with these things when you play with them sometimes you just make a beat and you find, figure something out and then you might use it again and it's that's where your experience comes in when you're creating beats as well. And here is something that you guys might want to learn how to do. Now this is a common common uh, trick that's in a lot of beats. Uh, Drake's producer Noah Shabib kind of does this kind of thing a lot of the time. This is where he creates a filter in the mix of a song, and I've done it with automation here. And you can see that I've done it on my output track, which is a bad idea, but uh, try to do it quickly to make a beat quickly. And when I'm in that mood of creating a beat, it's probably not a, the best idea to put it on your uh, on. It's best better to bust stuff out onto an aux track and control it that way. I did it the wrong way. <laughs> Don't go do it that, guys. But this is still the trick, and I can show you how I did that. Uh, we'll just listen to what it is first. This is a it's kind of a, a, a high pass filter on the or a low pass filter, a high pass filter on the on the whole mix, and it just it's a nice effect. goes through a filter it's a weird kind of um, it's a very hard effect to explain it sounds like it's do you ever hear like a house party next door that kind of sound next door it kind of has that kind of sound or it's kind of going through a weird thing in the radio it has that kind of filtered sound and you can see what it's doing here on this watch this see the way the dial is going down on that filter and this is just a single band uh, EQ that I put on the, the whole output of the thing. And I controlled it by adding these nodes on this, on this. And the way I got to this was, one second, I'll just, I'll just hide. So you can just press A on Logic and it will bring up all your automation tracks. So just press A and then it'll, you can control whatever automation you want. So obviously I'm controlling the EQ here, or you could control the volume, and uh, you can control uh, any of the effects that you have on here. 
and you can just put them on in one segment of the song. So for this four bars, I'm putting on a high pass filter. It's a nice effect and it's a nice trick to do and a lot of trap producers are doing this effect now and it's just a, it's become common. Uh, I think Drake's producer kind of popularized it um, but uh, I, I think it's a cool effect to put in a song and it, it, I don't do it all the time but I felt like in this song, the Juicy J kind of thing, I felt like it would work and uh, I think it works in the mix of this song. Doing it again there. And again, I'm just playing around with the sounds. There's no point in talking about this forever, but all I'm doing is I've taken out nearly everything here. Whereas before, in the, the first verse, I left in on a bunch of kicks and or some snares and stuff. This time I've only left the instrumentation. Do you know what I mean? It's up to you. I've left the 808 play. And it's up to you where you want to bring in your own sounds and play. You don't have to follow any kind of rules. All, all I wanted to do was just make it change up all the time so it doesn't sound boring even though that 808 is playing throughout nearly the whole mix of the song. And it's just a little trick or a little kind of production thing that you can do. So basically, I've got a, a, a 16 bar or 8 bar loop here, and I've practically created a whole beat out of it by just putting little bits here and there and little bits there. And it just, it's a, it's a good production te technique to do, and it's a quick way of making something that you really like into a good beat straight away and getting that creative process going quickly. Uh, and not taking too long and losing the kind of spark why you liked that section in the first place. If I don't like, if I don't create something quickly, this happens with me a lot, it will never be made. If something doesn't come to me quickly, even though if I like something in a mix, I have to make a beat out of it. I have to make a, a verse, a chorus, or something like that. If I've got a sound structure, that beat will be made then. And that's just my preference. And I think it's a good thing to start doing if you guys are getting beat block or stuff like that. So uh, just before I wrap this up, uh, I just have a little thing there as well that you guys probably know by now that I cut stuff out. And I'll show you why I do that. Listen to this. Oh, just fix it. just leaving that one snare play. So basically all I did was just pull back all the MIDI notes. And uh, you could do this with automation as well if you wanted to if you wanted to get in there and be really or bust stuff out to one and control it with one auxiliary track so you can control a bunch of us um uh, instruments but I just found it was easier to control the MIDI this thing this time and I got that nice effect where the snare hits and then everything kicks back in again. And it's just a nice effect. Okay guys, and I think I've really covered everything in the beat. If you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments. If I haven't explained anything properly, um, make sure you guys uh, let me know. Um, I think there's two instruments that I just didn't really, I, I don't think I mentioned these two. Oh um, yes, yeah just before I go I forgot about these two, sorry about that guys. Uh, I forgot about these two. So basically these two here are, uh, they're in massive and they're just kind of, what do I kind of use these ones? These ones are kind of just like an arp but they're kind of very subtly in the background, just to keep the track busy. You barely even notice they're there, but they just do kind of have another effect to it. This is another song, it's called, it's called Drives Me Nuts. 
and it's in massive as well. And it, they both kind of act, act as arps. And I'll just play this track without them so you can hear what like what they sound like when they come in. I know why I put them in. These two sounds now kind of differentiate the chorus from the hook from the verses, really. Um, but they're also metronomic. A lot of these kind of minimalist hip uh, trap beats, they really do kind of um, uh, have very little sounds in them, but the sounds that are in them are kind of me like a metronome. It's a bit weird. It's something that I've just kind of picked up, and they don't really do much, but you can hear the difference between it without it and with them. Is that they kind of not only do they act as a metronome in the track they kind of bounce around with the frequencies these arps are great for kind of creating a stereo feel and mix as well it's just when you can hear stuff floating around in the headphones or when you can hear it floating around in the speakers in front of you it's just a, it's a nice effect it's a nice um it creates that wider stereo field and i think it just kind of it kind of um, it creates a movement within the track as well. It kind of keeps the track going and pushing forward as well. Now, I think I've actually covered everything this time. Uh, if you guys saw something in this tutorial and I didn't explain it properly, hit me up in the comments and I'll try and do a video next time a bit better. Uh, if there's any questions, don't forget to hit me up. Uh, this was Dan with the Corporal Thief Beats. I hope you like this one. If you want to get the drums that I used in this track, it should be on a link in the description. Uh, this track was called Solo. It's on my beat store in the Corporal Check you guys out next time in the next video. Take care.